And hello, hello out there. I hope everybody's having a fantastic Tuesday again. Landing right here at HowChurch.net. Again, joined across the table with Pastor KD. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well, Landon. Good to be with you. Yes, sir. Good, Good to, to be, be with these people that are listening. I'm saying. Also, before we get started with episode two of How Table Talk, I want to give everybody a big thank you for all the views. Did a lot better than we thought we would do, <laughs> and uh, that's saying a lot. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Uh, remember, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Let people know about us. Yeah, do us a favor. So, anyways, Pastor KD, have a pretty good week. Everything going well? I think everything's going absolutely wonderful. We're excited about being here this afternoon and being able to share some thoughts and and some truths and hopefully someone will glean from it. Absolutely. You know, uh, we do this more than to just, you know, have a good excuse to put some nice decor on the stage. Uh, the reason... In the com or, or in the title of the video, I have talk all caps, because that's what all this is really about. You know, we got some some good juicy conversation coming out of this. So, Pastor, today I wanted to talk. Uh, you know, just kind of touching on what we talked about last week. Last week we talked all about how to make yourself valuable in the workplace, and to kind of go off of that. You know, the brother of that conversation, if you will, it's um, how to navigate through life's little back roads. Now stay with me here. I love analogies. You probably picked up on that. So my analogy here is, you know, we talked last time about you have to do what you're passionate about. You got to pray about that and see what God's asked you to do. You talked about how you prayed in the barracks and he said, I want you to preach and all that. Well, that's good. That's great. That's crucial. But once you get that, mm -hmm. you know, folks think, all right, well, now I'm on this new path. It's going to be, you know, like a like a first day of school. Everyone's going to be so nice, and I'm going to meet who I need to meet, and it's going to be like an open house. But sometimes, you know, you don't get to get right on the highway. You don't get to get right on the interstate and go towards being a pastor or being a podcaster or being a whatever. Uh, you got to take some back roads, some detours, and by that I mean, you know, let's say God's called, uh, you know, a very popular major, and everybody wants to do uh, uh, nursing. So let's say God has put on your heart, I want you to help people, I want you to heal people and all that. But uh, before you can get even get in the door to nursing school, you gotta work for two years, uh, like at Walmart or something, no, nothing wrong with that, but you gotta do something completely unmedical related just to pay your way. So sometimes that can discourage people. So uh, what are your thoughts on life's back roads and if you have anything, you know, maybe that's happened to you that you'd like to share to kind of kind of, kind of enlighten people on that? Yeah, now as far as nursing, I can't speak intelligently to that. Maybe you can, but I can't. That was the example, <laughs> not sticking on that. Okay. But um, as far as, like you said, to get on that road, what did you have to do? The first thing you said you had to do was pray. And we spoke about that last week. So you pray about which road God wants you to take or which path God is trying to lead you down. So if you start with prayer and you start with God, it just would behoove you and I to continue with God. And I think what happens is we get off the road simply because we ask God to lead us and then he begins to lead us. We get on that path and then we forget about the one who's leading us. Things begin to go well maybe the money starts coming in we find the man or the woman that we're looking for the occupation that we're looking for and we have the propensity in us to forget about the god that is in us and so i think once you start with god you stay with god and god will continue leading us he said give us this day our daily bread and i'll say give us this day our daily lead let god lead us daily and um, and then once we do that, he said, when we acknowledge him in all of our ways, uh, then he will uh, direct our path. You know how that path just come in there. Notice how that just came into that verse, that path. And so he gives the direction. But it's a day by day. It's not a one time thing. It's a day by day. Absolutely. Uh, you know, one of one of my tips here, uh, not not that it's something I do every single day, but it, but it's an idea I had just the other day that came to me when I, when I was starting to kind of form, you know, what we were going to talk about. One of the ideas that came is, you know, everything, it's just like a moment of perfect clarity when you pray and, and you, you hear what you need to hear and you're like, well, that's what I'm going to do. That's what God's called me to do. And uh, a lot of 
evangelists and preachers and all that when they tell us uh or, you know i've heard a lot of them say things like god called me to ministry and i decided right then i was going to do it and i've been doing it for 50 years or however long well that's because they don't have time to tell you what it was really like you know getting there and all that so so i recommend keeping a journal you know and that's not something like you know don't think that you're distrusting god by writing down all these things you know i mean god probably loves that you know because I know me, I forget a lot of things, and, and like you said, you meet somebody, we'll form a relationship, steer it away. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying necessarily that that's Satan. Sometimes that's just people's feelings, you know, but then Satan can come in with the money and the contracts and uh, uh, the nice vehicles and suits, and I like some of that, but, you know, um, he can come in with that. So if you keep that journal, you know, it's real hard to go back in the, in the vault and find those conversations with God. And just as human beings, we forget stuff over time. Keep that journal whenever you are starting to get tempted. You'll be like, well, you know, uh, getting back to that example, uh, I do want to go to nursing school, right? I want to do this. Uh, but at Walmart, they just offered me a full-time salary job uh, doing this, that, and the other. I mean, I'll have to stay in this area. I get to travel every now and then. But, I mean could be worse you know well then you know that's kind of you know the devil kind of getting you to just settle for second best you know it's a great yeah. job it's a great career but it's not your calling so in times like that when it's pretty obvious to take the money and get out go back to that journal and flip through that journal and date your date your entries so when you write down prayed to god today uh decided i'm going to do this i'm going to do it write it down so that it'll be easy it'll click back and put a date on it a little time stamp that way you can be like oh yeah huh, what happened to me in the last year, huh? And then you can go down and, and so that's just kind of a way to, to keep it in your memory and hold yourself accountable a little bit. Just something I would recommend. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure you probably have other ways of uh, doing things like that. Anything you would recommend? No, I think uh, journaling is good. I, I think also when you see a detour, you have to understand and go back to what God's called you to do. And anything that God calls you to do is going to complement the vision that he's given you and the direction that he's given you. So, you know, you got to be careful because Satan can appear as an angel of light. Um, he does offer, um, you know, these detours and in, in these elevators to the top is what I'll call them. But uh, there, there is no shortcut to the top. There's no easy way. Uh, to walk with God uh, in the sense of that you're not going to have problems, you're not going to have complications, you're not going to have difficulties, but those should not deter you from following the path that God's put you on. Those things build character. Those things make you who you are. For instance, Joseph, he got thrown in, he had got thrown into the, the pit, and I spoke about that Sunday, and, and as a matter of fact, I'm not making a plug here, but I would go to howchurch.net and listen to the sermon that I preached uh, about labor pains. But Joseph had gotten thrown into the pit, and then uh, he had gotten thrown in to the uh, prison. And uh, both of those things were just horrible, but God had a path for him. And uh, it built character, and then he ended up in the palace. But see, he knew how to act in the palace because he had already been in the prison and he had already been in the pit. Could you imagine God just taking a young person and bringing him into the palace and be second in command under the king, the arrogance, the pride, the ego? Well, you see it happening in jobs all the time where a young man gets elevated to a position and a young lady gets elevated into a position and they come in, they're a novice, they're young, uh, they don't know very much, and the mentor begins to equip the mentoree. And then in about three weeks, the mentoree thinks he knows more or she knows more than the mentor. And uh, because, you know, he gets a little credit or she gets a little, you know, accolades, and, and they just get off that path. And so understand you're on a path. God's leading you. Keep praying daily, every day, that God would keep you there. And when the bumps come and the obstacles come, listen because they will come. He said, when the storms come. He didn't say if the storms come, but he said, if you're founded upon a rock, he said, the floods won't bother you, the winds won't bother you to the point of destro destroying you. So you got to go through the obstacles. You got to go through the hard times. You can't throw your sucker in the mud. 
when things get bad, uh, you got to keep trusting God. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so so another one of my little points I wanted to kind of bring up is, uh, and you know, this isn't necessarily a question, but just something I uh, figured I'd throw out there for us to kind of marinate on is, you know, a lot of people forget that uh, life isn't universal. Now that's a pretty that's pretty out there, pretty well, duh, kind of thing. But but it's something we we forget about. You know, everybody's a little different. Um, everybody's story is different, and what works for some doesn't work for others. So you know that doesn't mean, folks, that you should always, uh, you know, when you, when you see somebody mess up or, or read the Bible and see some of the bad things that happen to people and all that. Well, then. You know, you, you can't lean on that as an excuse and be like, oh, well, you know, life's different for everybody. It ain't my life, you know. You know, you, you do got to take a hint, but at the same time, you know, there's there's people, I feel, that they just get so discouraged because they get on this path. They're trusting God, and, you know, uh, you know, God wants us to come to him. But you, but you do have to agree that uh, for, for some people that aren't raised in church, aren't around church, and don't really get introduced to this kind of stuff until they're, you know, close to adulthood or already adults um, for those people it is a little bit harder to do that because it's like they're trusting somebody they just met in a way well I think a lot of times what happens um, I, and I'm no authority on this just my opinion and what I think I have observed is that you know God will be blessing you in the path that you're on well I so respect that and admire that that I want to be like you well, my path that God may be leading me on may be different, but I'm mimicking you and not following him. And so, you know, the Bible says train up a way, a train up a child in the way he should go. That gives indication that not every child ought to go the same way. And I just want to say this. God's not going to bless who you pretend to be or who you post to be. Not supposed to be. Post like Facebook. You know, you see everybody's highlight reel and and they're, you know, not saying that they're not authentic. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, many are. But if you aren't authentic with all these highlight reels you're posting, don't get it confused. God won't bless who you post to be and who you pretend to be, but who he's called you to be. And um, I think we all have preachers. We might not want to admit it. But when I first got in the ministry, I didn't know how to preach. I still don't, some say <laughs> I but mean, I, do, I, I don't know. That. I don't know how to preach. You know, I didn't know how to preach, and I didn't really know what to do. And I didn't want to be a phony, but I didn't want to be boring. So you have this tendency to pick up mannerisms of other preachers and things like that. But then when you get to be my age, thirty years old, you know, you you have a tendency just to kind of settle down and say, God's going to bless who He called me to be, and um, not everybody's going to like the path that you're on and you're not going to like everyone else's path but what i'm saying to you is this is that you're talking about universal you're talking about god's will for my life or to be your life now there are some things that god's will is for both of our lives like to love and care and share and anything that's in the bible about giving and serving but where we serve and and who I marry, and what ministries call me, th those things begin to separate. So here are the specific things, and here are the general things. The general things are for all of us, but the specific things are, are for each individual. So i got to find out what my calling is, God's will for my life. No bumps are coming, heartaches are coming, good times are coming, but he's the God of the mountain and the valley. Absolutely, yes, sir. Um, you know, another part of that universal thing is uh, just to kind of sum that up and, 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 and make a bumper sticker out of it, you know, make a nice little saying is I would just say that in the Bible, it, that's the guide to life. But when you look at other people's hardships and things, yes, you know, you can't always be like, well, you know, I've been through hardships and translated into modern day. You know, I've been through the same stuff. Why am I getting blessed? All that. You have rules and you have methods. Yeah. The rules would be things like the commandments, things that you are pretty obvious, not don't do that. Methods are, well, that's just how those people did what God wanted. That's, let me repeat that. That is how they did what God wanted them to do. Yeah. There's methods. 
that doesn't mean yeah so, so and, just and like what you said yeah and let me just so that no one gets confused not that they would of, of what you said but you know the message stays the same in the bible the methods change you know but but let me just say this too is that you know when you look at someone's life and you begin to try to mimic that individual well first of all you're already and when i say mimic i'm talking about if god called me to preach and God has not called you to preach, but you're trying to be a preacher because I'm a preacher. That's what I'm talking about. Because yeah. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So we're to be good examples, and we are to follow one another's examples in the area of character and integrity and trust and, and walking with God. But here's what I find, and I'll say this to all those who are working jobs and uh, younger people, if I will, uh, if I may, um, because we have so many brilliant young people in our world today. But, but I think we always, we always want to start on top. And so what I find as I talk to people, and you watch this 50, 60-year-old guy drive by in a truck, you can see a nice truck. You can see someone 20 and 25 salivating at the mouth because they want what that man has. But that man's twice their age. And what you have to do in the work spot is you can't start on top. And people want what you have. They just don't want to pay the price that you had to pay to get what you got. So they want what you have, but they don't want to do what you had to do to get what you got. Absolutely. And you didn't just show up in a nice truck, in a nice house. Uh, you might have been doing something for 30 years. A man, if he's got any kind of management skills, ought to have a few things in 30 years. Now, we're talking about things, you know. But then also let's talk about character. After a while, you know, you kind of start growing up. And, and I'll say this about me. I don't think I really started growing up till I got 35. And what I mean by that is being a good man, a good husband, and a good dad. Kind of selfish. Men are selfish. We but, are. But, yeah. but it takes a while to mature and not to die on every hill as you're walking through these paths, too. Things that used to bother me don't bother me anymore. And the, some of the foolish things I used to do, I don't do anymore. But that comes with maturity, that comes with age, and that comes with getting on this path, walking through the hard times and the difficult times, and trusting God through all of that, and being myself. Not trying to be a landing ride or anybody else is trying to be the best Keith Dickens that he can be. Not the best of all the rest but my best yes sir you see that's uh that kind of brings me to something else you know now kind of shift and focus a little bit more specifically you know back on the workplace exactly is you know you've said to me privately you've said to me in meetings and you've said to me on this very show again thank you for all those views last time uh let's try to make that happen again uh you've <laughs> said to me uh, you need mentors you know you need to find a mentor in the workplace and something you know and remember, folks, I'm not saying this from experience all the time. I'm just a guy sitting in a chair telling you, you know, how you're supposed to. Does it mean I do it perfectly in my own life? Not at all. And I don't. And and, and not even our mentors do it perfectly. That's they right. are getting close to, you know. And they're human. Yes. They're going to make mistakes. Yeah. They're not God. They you know, preach about God, maybe talk about God, but they're not God. The only people that really lucked out on finding the perfect mentor were the disciples. Exactly. You know, and that's not really going to happen to anyone else. It, that's it, right. it, well, I don't even know why I said really. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but, uh, but what I wanted to say was, you know, when you find that mentor, just one thing you need to remember and keep in the back of your mind is it is pretty easy, especially, you know, if it's just a cool guy in general or, you know, a cool woman that not only do they know what they're doing, but like you said, they have nice stuff. They, they dress nice. People like them. They're not phony, you know, and all that. Well, then you start wanting to, you know, you start idolizing them, you know, have a little crush on them and all that. And that's fine if it keeps you motivated. But remember, they got that way because they love what they do. They don't love somebody else that doesn't. And let me, let me say this. You're talking about mentors. I think that's so huge. So... We don't have time to talk about it, but I, 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 in, in, in totality, but I do want to address this. Uh, how do you find a good mentor? That would be a good thing for, for everyone to study. But, but let's say that, you know, you do find that mentor. It's just so very important that you open your mind and you become teachable to that mentor 
uh, and, and receive from him or her. And a, a mentor you want to look for is someone who's got character and integrity, someone who's going to be transparent with you, someone who's going to be honest to tell you the truth. Uh, let me just say what I find out is, is and, and, and this is not to be condescending in any way, but we just got to talk real. This, we, we just got to have to start talking real to people. But I find out where women will go talk to other women who's been married four, five, six, seven times, like I said Sunday, about what, would, what, would you, what advice would you give me about men. It's not saying that that lady's been married six or seven times doesn't know anything about men. I just don't think that's the best selection. It, it, it amazes me how young people will not go to young ladies who are great moms and, and go to young men who are great dads and won't say, tell me what you're doing to rear your children up. We raise animals, but we rear kids. But rear your kids up. What, what, what do you do? Show me what to do. Or you see someone who has a lot of money. We just got to talk about money because that's what people or, uh, or someone who's walking with God. What, what are you doing? Someone who's spending time with, and you see character. In life. How, someone who's growing a church or growing a business. I just don't understand why notebooks or phones aren't brought out and people aren't pursuing. Uh, they want what that person has. But first of all, they don't realize God is really the one doing it. But instead of going to that person saying, what is God doing through your life? And taking notes, they'll sit there sometimes and be envy or jealous. I'm, I'm like, come on, man, go ask. I mean, go ask, what are you doing? Uh, Mama, what are you doing to, to rear your kids? Daddy, and, and they would be more than glad. But then when they tell you, you're going to have to trust them. So if you see a beautiful example is what I'm saying. If you see a great example is what I'm saying. Go to that person, buy them lunch, pay them $100 an hour if you get to. No, really. Go pay them $100 an hour, have your questions written out, and say, I want to ask you, blop, 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 blop. You getting a whole man's life for $100 and a Happy Meal? That's a, pretty good, that's a pretty good exchange if you ask me. You know, when you put it that way, it really does make a lot of sense. And that reminds me of a little, you know, quick memory. Uh, when I was about to graduate high school, it was my last semester. Yeah, I think the spring. Into, yeah, yeah, it was it was that, that spring 2013, getting ready to finish. Uh, I hadn't quite decided that this is what I wanted to do. I, I, I didn't even look into a mass communications program. I just kind of assumed I was going to do what Dad did. So I went with business yeah. and put that down on the little pre-application. So... Actually, I forgot to change it, so funny story, about two years into my uh, college career when I'm still doing my, my common core, I was a business major, didn't even know it, forgot to change it. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, I, I, I had reached out, you know, they had some people come by the school and meet with us seniors and kind of give us those tools and be like, so what does he want to do? Okay, well, let's look into this, and then they would kind of start reaching out to people they knew that did that. Uh, for the people that chose things like nursing and that, you know, that's easy. There's there, there's plenty of those ladies running around sin law, and, and most of them, if not all of them, are, are, are very willing to help you out there. But then, like, you know, for people that chose the business, this one lady, she said, I know the guy that does all the, the bookkeeping. He's the manager um, of this branch, this section of the Coca-Cola plant. She goes, how about you go meet with him? I did. Really nice guy. I believe his name was Dwayne Fox. Yeah. yeah, if anybody knows him, tell him, tell him I still remember it. I walked in there and hey, Mr. Fox, super nice guy. He sat down and one of the things he told me, he says, if you decide you don't want to do this, hey, that's cool. That's just how life is. He says, but just remember, he says, um, he goes, what's always going to help you is you have to kind of impose on them a little bit to really learn what you want to do. He said, when I first started doing this. He said, I was uh, just gotten my way into like a desk job, you know, what management yet, but out of the warehouse. And he goes, and I went to my uh, to my supervisor and I said, all right, man, I'm about to get out of here and kind of getting back what we talked last time. About to get out of here, anything you need and not just busy work, but, you know, I mean, I mean, is this OK? I mean, would you like some of this, some of that? And he goes, no, I'm fine. You've been here all day. Appreciate it. I was just about to, you know, make a budget real quick and I'm out of the door, too. And he said. Well, you mind if I watch? 
and he said, well, and he kind of shook him by, and I mean, really? This is, th- I, I don't even want to do this. He goes, I know, but I need to learn it, so do you mind if I watch? And he goes, come on, and he sat down, and he goes, and it was not fun. He says, but I took notes. I took accurate notes. He goes, again, he goes, I didn't want to, you know, keep this guy longer at work than need be, so I kept the questions limited and short, you know, and you can always go back and be like, hey, uh, now that you got some free time, what we did last night, you know, you can always rehash. But, you know, you just got to do that. And let, me, and let me just say this, too. When, you, when you're dealing with mentors, let's just be honest. I'm going to say something that's going to really rattle a lot of preachers right now. I've been there. I've done that. Guilty. Now, I can admit Okay, but a lot of preachers, a lot of leaders, a lot of business owners are insecure. And uh, they're worried about someone getting the praise or the glory. They're worried about someone getting the attention. And so, you know, when you go and you try to pursue people in the work spot because they're insecure and scared they're going to lose their job, a lot of times they'll stiff arm you and won't train you and won't teach you because they're going to do the bare minimum of the job and they're going to be trying to get by and they see a hungry young person that wants to excel and grow and it scares them because if that person knows more than they, they feel insecure. The thing that I've always done when it comes to other pastors and people like that, it's not a competition, even though it was at different times of my life. It, and preachers won't admit that, uh, but it, it's true. I'm a preacher. I can help everybody help, you know, bring it to the table. But the thing that, that always kept me going is I kept growing. So, for instance, if you came to me, you're not going to outwork me, outread me, outstudy me, and outgrow me. You might be smarter than me, but that'll be all you'll be. But you, you won't outgrow me. And so I'm not worried about investing in you as a mentor Because I want to see you grow, first of all. That's the pleasure of what I do as a pastor is to see people grow in God and really do better things than me. But what I'm trying to communicate is this, is that I'm not worried about anyone taking my job or outgrowing me because I'm going to become so valuable to the organization. Now, I'm talking out there, not necessarily in church because we've got to be able to separate this, and I'm not always separating, and I'm trusting that the people are listening, they're intelligent, they're getting it. But you become so valuable to the organization that they can't do without you. So as you keep growing, you keep going. And as you keep growing, the boss is like, man, we can't get rid of him or her. I mean, every day they're bringing something new to the work spot. They're never late. They're always on time. They're always learning. They're always teachable. You know, that's how you keep your job. You don't keep your job by sabotaging people by hurting people, by gossiping, by slandering. I've had staff before that were lazy. And so what they would do is they would keep the other ones from growing and they would keep the other ones from learning because it made them feel secure. Does that make sense to you? You know, it makes perfect sense, and I don't really mean to do this on purpose, but, uh, you know, got to throw a little scripture reverence in there. Ain't there a little something in there talking about you reap what you sow? Yeah. You know, so so if you do do people dirty like that, you will advance up the ladder for a while, and then eventually, don't know how, don't know when, don't know who's going to do it, but something's going to knock you down. And, and you yeah, and let me just cut you off. I got to say this is that so what I'm really saying because I want to bring it to a to a close on what I'm saying. What happens? Either the organization outgrows you, or you outgrow the organization. And that's where the friction comes in. So, you know, you know when it's time to leave, if if the organization's outgrowing you and you can't keep up or you're outgrowing the organization. But but a lot of times growth can't happen because you're wanting to excel and I'm trying to hold you back. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Instead of, instead of uh, propelling you, equipping you, encouraging you to go forward I kind of want to kill your motivation and your momentum. So, so for those who are in the job spot or the job place out there, I would say don't let anyone, anyone hold you back from learning because 
that is where you become so valuable. You don't get paid for the hours you work at a job. You get paid for the value that you bring to the work spot. Yes, sir. And, you know, all of that, folks, if, you, if you're trying to follow along here, all of that we were talking about is, is just finding that right mentor. And, in fact, I think, you know, we probably will spend that and do a, to a standalone episode at some point. But, uh, you know, originally we were saying how to, you know, we're on these life back roads. We're trying to go towards the, you know, or we're on the path God has put us on. We, we see what we think is the end goal. So remember always, folks, you know, um, I think you'll agree with this for sure, pray about that end destination daily because as we change, as we experience things, our end destination, we're like, well, you know, maybe maybe I'm cut out to do this. You know, again, that's why the journaling's there. But, you know, we... But, but, but enjoy the journey, too. That's, that's one thing I could say about the wisdom that God's given me that I didn't always do is because i had my mark and i had a goal and a destination and i need both but enjoy the journey pick up the lessons on the way and you're talking about this path when you fall down while you're down there go ahead and pick something up learn it on the way up and just just keep going and don't don't lose focus and and don't 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 lose uh, the excitement of it enjoy it you know that's actually just what I was trying to get to, and and you uh, you put it in words that I was looking for, couldn't quite find yet. But uh, you know the journey, that's what it's all about, people. You know that's what it's all about. You know we take these these detours in life, whether it be for financial reasons, so we can save up to do what we want to do, or whether it be just for you know years of experience reason. Like you know you want to work in a certain field but you haven't had any on the job experience you got to go work low level for a while you don't want to get caught in that storm and all that well you know enjoy the journey and always ask yourself and you know this was what was put on my heart and and, and it's something that kind of used to scare me it's one of those things like well how do i know this is really what what god you know how do i know god put this particular part of the journey in and it's not just me being complacent or it's not just me making it harder you know how do i know i'm actually doing it well of course there's prayer but also always ask yourself you know this when you're trying when you pray about something and then you're trying to you know keep your mind open see what god's putting in there always remember think about where you're at and then say is there any and, and it can be small or big anything at all useful that i'm getting out of this and does it relate to where i want to go and if it doesn't then ask yourself, does it relate to just me being happy as a person? You know, it, it, is it teaching me good social skills? Is it teaching me, you know, um, how, to, how to talk to people maybe of a different language? You know, how to, you know, maybe you're working as a tour guide somewhere. You know, how to, how to get along with people from other areas. Is it teaching you something very useful? And if it is, I can almost guarantee God wants you to be there. Well, I can, I can, I feel like I can shorten everything you just said by saying don't just go through the day get from the day you get from it and and i think that as as you're going through the day you you make sure that if you if you want to come from a christian perspective which that's the only way i know how to co go from or come from is that you know you you can tell if your job is where you need to be if you're let's say you're uncertain and you're praying about it do you have a peace in your heart i'm not talking about is it a hard day you're gonna have to work okay I mean, everybody's gonna have to work uh, but do you have a peace in your heart? Is it, is it, is it keeping you from God? Uh, and, and what I mean by that is, is, is it just where you can't fellowship, you can't worship God anymore on Sundays? You, 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 you just the the job environment's so bad, and you're praying and you're trying to worship God through your work because that's where He wants you. Not if the job's bad. I'm asking you as you're at the job. Are those things, you know, minus in your life? And if those things are minus in your life, you have no peace. Your family never has any time. You never have any time for God in the sense of spending time. You, you don't have any uh, off time. You know, it's just people that go to work and they'll just, there's two extremes. And I'm going to preach about that this coming Sunday, by the way, is there's the workaholics and there's the nonaholics. 
I mean, some will work themselves to death and some don't want to work to their death. And so blessed be the balance is what I'm saying. That I think you can make your job, I think any job you have, you can worship God through that job. If you bring a balance to it and you find, is there peace there? Is there time for me to be able to separate from the job, to be able to spend time with the family? You know, I, I just believe that you can you can make that happen and you can be productive, and that's not just going through the day, that's getting from the day. You know, uh, shifting over now, and all that was great, by the way, uh, and folks, I hope you uh, took notes on that. That's a preview of this Sunday, special preview. 9 a.m. and 10.30. 9 a.m. and 10.30. <laughs> if, How if, church dot net. If we had a camera behind us, you could see all the, all the available seats. We're not going to run out of room. Come on. Yeah.